description. Uh, in studio uh, right now, we turn our attention to Kay Barkwell and Sandy Hamilton. Sandy's a board member with Horses with Hearts, and Kay runs the whole thing. Kay, good morning. <laughs> Welcome back. Good morning. It's it's uh, just a blessing to be here this morning. It's a blessing to have you. Thank you so much for coming in. I heard news that you wanted to get on the program from our buddy Bill Stubblefield. Yes. And uh, seconds later, I texted you, and you're like, I'll be there. And I'm bringing Sandy. And Sandy did not come empty-handed. What <laughs> no. do you got there, Matt? Should I ever? No. Uh, if I can hold it up, hopefully you can get yeah. a, a good shot Wow. There. What, uh, what do you got there, Sandy? Well, they are homemade carrot cake cupcakes with a homemade icing. Uh, I did mention to you, you know, horses. I was going to do a really nice oat pastry. And then I just decided, ah, let's do the carrot cake. So that, so. They're carrot cake cupcakes that came out of the oven about 8 o'clock. Oh, I think so horses <laughs> like carrots also. I think yeah. so. Yeah. I, think, I thought we were good. That was very kind. I of wasn't you. sure if we were going to have puppies here because Matt and I had a meeting yesterday, <laughs> and he mentioned that I might need to hold a puppy this morning. Yes. No. He did so, say that. So I wanted to be, you know, have something like a cupcake that could be kept at a distance. If you, that, that would be shredded <laughs> right now. Was, oh, my goodness. Yeah, they would all be gone. Oh, yeah. I thought, of, I mean, Judge Redding had a, a beautiful little dog yesterday. Raya. Did but you then, see that yesterday? The, Raya, the little Raya, dog, Raya Sunshine? Beautiful. Oh, yeah. my goodness. But I, I thought, Raya only had to be here for about a half an hour. If I bring three in, they're going to be here for two <laughs> hours. And there's three, not one. And anyway, it was like, yep. no, it, this is especially getting them up this morning and out and feeding them and everything else and they were all over the place and uh, there's no way there's no way Do you have a picture of them um not a real good one i tried to take a picture this morning just so i could show you like hey this yeah. is what i was going to bring in and they wouldn't be still long enough so every picture one of them's got a head turning or so he does have doing, video you know, yeah and but you know it has to be video oh. because you know they're moving they're moving constantly <laughs> it has to be but yeah. once you constantly. name them it's all over you don't yeah. even have to suppose whether yeah. you're going to keep them or not <laughs> And yep. she's exactly right there. Oh, no. And they you know, all, you're, you're pretending a little all, bit. Oh, we might. You know you're keeping them. All, yeah. all, all end names. So there's a Nala, a, a Nova, and a Nemo. So one one dude. And that, all that's all Disney characters? Nemo. Uh, yeah, out of, out of various movies. I think, uh, uh, well, I'm not Nova. Nala's, Nala's Lion King. Nala's Lion King. Nemo's and then, of course, obvious. Nemo. But I think Nemo Nova. Nemo might be Finding Nemo. He's throwing that out there. <laughs> Yeah, if he, if Nemo anything, might be from Finding Nemo. I'm possible. Just, you know. If he's anything like his mom and runs off, that's we'll put that on the Eastern Panhandle Lost Pets. You know, <laughs> Finding Nemo. Finding uh, Nemo. Yes. <laughs> Very nicely played. Yeah. His mother, the dog, was out catting around. Yeah. 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 Kay, do you get uh, newborn horses on the ranch? No. Just, the, just the established <laughs> ones. That was de rather definitive, Kay. Yes. I've had several people ask if we'll ever breed, and um, the answer is no. No, no foals in your no. fold. No. So no. And that comes from years ago. Kathy, our riding instructor, had a mare that was in foal. She went on a business trip. Jamie and I were to be um, stand-in parents. Um, that Saturday night, we lost the foal and the mother. Oh. And I oh, said, geez. nah, I'd never want to do this again. That's a tough um, one. You know, yeah. first one out the gate didn't go well. Don't mm -hmm. want to ever do it again. So, uh, how many horses are you currently uh, with right now? Well, we try to share that we have 18 equines. There's mm -hmm. three miniatures. There's four ponies, and then that makes 11 horses. What's the difference between a pony and a miniature? Height, how basically. What, height. what height are we talking about with a miniature versus a pony? Uh, miniature is usually no more they come in classes but there are usually no more than 12 hands mm -hmm. 12 to 13 hands and from there to 14 two is a pony and then anything thir or 15 hands and above is a horse did you know that Matt John, I, I, I did not no, no I I did not but it, do you I mean, different people have different size hands. I mean, is there a standard hand size? I mean, 14 inches or four okay. inches. I'm sorry, a standard hand. Okay. 14 four inch hand. Yeah, yeah. four, <laughs> four, four hands. inches. Wow. Four hands. Right. I don't want to. I don't want to come up against the gigantic yeah. horse. <laughs> and a lot of it doesn't come into play unless you're showing. You know, uh -huh. and yeah. then you like the penny, the horse we founded the program. You know, I bought her as a horse, and then I found out she was a pony. Um, she was 14 one and so that allowed Jamie to show her not only in horse classes but in pony classes so we could go to a show and show all day in the pony and then horse is there a Did difference you... between a donkey and a mule yes what's the difference 
you know? It's breeding, but I'm not going to go there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Did you, I don't know, is that bad? <laughs> Did you, um, when you found out the horse that you bought from a horse trader was a pony, did you get a little bit of a refund, you know, a discount or? No, no. And it worked out really well. It was the right size for her as a 10 year old. Mm -hmm. And um, Penny was an amazing horse and she became an amazing um, therapy horse. She was the horse I founded the program with. So she was a good height, but had lots of experience, good heart. She'd take care of any, any kid or any human that I put on her. Okay, tell us the Horses with Heart story. How did you start it? When did you start it? And, and what is your mission? Well, we started in 05, 2005, after I met a little girl that was blind and in a wheelchair from a cancerous brain tumor that was on her brain stem. The removal of the tumor left some swelling and left her in that condition. So I had the opportunity to do some um, respite care for her. And so every Wednesday I would meet her mom and her at the Dorothy McCormick and she'd do 45 minutes of PT and have a 15 minute break. And um, Lindsay had ridden prior to um, her cancer and before they moved to West Virginia, they came from Pennsylvania. And, you know, I talked about having horses. We had just retired Penny the, as a show pony and bought Jamie a 15-2 a um, paint. So she, she grew and we had to grow bigger in the horse world. And um, just thought, man, she just had this vision of A, she wanted to ride, but B, she wanted to see other kids ride. So I began to research it. I talked to anybody and everybody say, hey, I have a pony and you could do this with it. And they go, yeah, you're crazy. Let's move on the conversation. <laughs> so one day at um, the Dorothy McCormick Center, I just said, you know, hey, Lens, I'm not going, I'm not getting anywhere. And she said, well, that's because God wants you to do it. And I said, well, I can't, you know, I don't ride. I, I don't know how to ride. And, um, John and I had a, a business and it didn't go well, so obviously I'm not a business person and it's not gonna work. And she said, no, um, you know, God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the called wow. and you're being called. Hmm. And so I went back to Jamie's riding coach and we went to a conference and came out and decided she could do the horse stuff if I could do the paperwork and kind of took off from hmm. there. Um, in 06, well, we found it in 05, and then in 06, um, found out how to transfer a non-mobile human from a wheelchair to a horse and got real excited. Um, Lindsay's family had moved to South Carolina, so I called, and they, they were going to bring her up in April, and that end of the March, she um, was diagnosed with another cancerous brain tumor, mm -hmm. and she passed in the middle of one of our horse shows. We did a fundraising horse show, and we got word mm -hmm. that evening that she had gone to heaven. And so she got to see the horse show. She um, got to see Penny in her first role as a therapeutic riding horse. And um, from then it's just rolled from one horse to two horses, from one kid to five kids. And um, in 2014, Trinity United Methodist Church gave us the 30 acres that we're at now, our forever home, where Penny is buried and lays peacefully there in a pasture. But um, this past Sunday, we celebrated our um, home. We brought the horses there on August the 4th of 2014. And we celebrated our 10 year um, anniversary at being at the farm. And how, how many folks have you helped over the years at your oh, program? I, I've, I really need to stop and count that up. But I can tell you when we came to the farm, we were servicing about 38 kids a summer. And last year we served over 200 individuals wow. within all of our programs. We started with just therapeutic riding. Now we have an, an equine learning and mental health division. So we've expanded from um, not only kids with special needs, physically, mentally, and emotionally, but a lot of trauma, addiction, um, PTSD. We have a, a small veterans program on Saturdays. So we serviced over 200 individuals last year so. amazing stuff so sandy it's it's easy when you listen to Kay talk uh to realize why you're on the board of uh, horses with hearts so tell me uh, exactly what as a board member uh you do and and what uh what you need other people to do to make sure that horses with hearts stays around well i i can usually say a lot of words you know that <clears throat> but I ask for money, and you can send us money. Mm -hmm. See how simple that is? Yeah. It really is. Very succinct. <laughs> Get to the point, man. It really is. I, I met Kay about uh, 12 years ago, which we've always talked about the irony of that because we both grew up in Berkeley County, but we never met before uh, a chamber uh, breakfast, a Rise and Shine breakfast. She was the program. 
And of course, it, it didn't, it wasn't lost on me that she presented a program and, and a PowerPoint presentation that had Thrive casting crowns playing in the background. And I'm listening to it, and I'm thinking, okay, here's one of my favorite bands ever, and they're playing Thrive, and we all should thrive, and listen to what's going on with this program, and I've got to be involved with it. But, of course, at the time, I had a few other things going on in my life. As always. I was working. <laughs> I, think, I think you said you served on 23 boards at one point, or 17, or something like or that. 71, or 111. <laughs> Those are just numbers. You are the, the, the <coughs> busiest, the busiest volunteering, helping person in this county, without a doubt. Amen. Well, thank you for that. But, you, you know, I don't volunteer help with anything, particularly in retirement, that I don't strongly believe in. And so, you know, once I did retire, um, Kay and good friend Tracy Rohrball, who's uh, a longtime board member, Tracy said, you know, I think it's time to come on our board now. I said, yeah, I think it's time to come on our board now. So... Um, you know, as, as actually the Admiral and I were talking, he and Bonnie were at the celebration on Sunday, and um, I said, you know, there's not a penny that goes into this organization that she's not completely physically responsible to see that it goes to help someone else. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we often think of the special needs community, and uh, certainly it's an important community that's underserved, that's served at the farm. But, um, you know, I referred someone from the recovery center who called me after an hour on the farm and said, it's the only place in my life I've ever been that I've felt peace. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. And that's what I needed to keep me in recovery. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and, and the veterans, I mean, we have numbers to prove what's going on with those programs. But, <clears throat> but getting back to your question, Rob, I didn't forget you had a question. It's okay. <laughs> um, and it's tough for me not to be emotional about this program, honestly, because it's okay it, too. doctors, Hear me, all you medical professionals. Mm. If you're treating somebody with depression, just send them to the farm. 1952 mm. Files Crossroad. Because there's no way any minute you spend at the farm you can't feel good mm. when you see what's happening there. I mean, mm. I, I've been there when um, there's been a young man on a horse who's never spoke before, and he said, Mama. Mm. And his mama's standing there to see and hear that. Um, kids that, you know, they are not involved in anything and don't want to do anything, but they don't want to miss the ride. Mm -hmm. So um, we need board members. So reach out to me. Uh, we're, you know, we don't spend a lot of time meeting. We spend most of our time just being out in the community and trying to determine how we can be of help. Mm -hmm. And right now, one of the big ways that you can be of help is we're, we are going to have a 1952 stable club. We do have a 19. 52 stable club and the 1952 corresponds to our address because lots of people still don't know where we are 1952 files crossroad but uh if you'd like to pledge 19 dollars and 52 cents a month a year if you want to do 19,520 whatever amount we will accept it because one of the tragedies that we've been experiencing on a regular basis when you go from 14 people being served to over 200 being served that's just between April and October. We don't have an indoor arena. So you've got these kids that are doing great and their caregivers and their parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and everyone who's involved in their life have this great program where they can take them. Hmm. But then all of a sudden it stops because there's nowhere inside. So it's like, oh, hmm. okay, your lessons are over for this year. We'll see you in three months, four months, six months. So it's critical it's critical for not only the people who are benefiting directly, the riders and people in the programs, but also um, for those caregivers, they need that time. Mm -hmm. You know, often they stay and watch, but sometimes it gives them time that they can just slip away and have some moments to themselves. But right now we have to shut the operation down because we don't have an indoor arena. So the 1952 Stable Club is specifically designed to have, have a funding stream so that we can, um, you know, provide services year-round. It's, it, it's really it, a crime to have to stop it at any point. Any idea what that dollar amount would be? Mm -hmm. to, finish, to finish the complex, that's the indoor, the educational part, the additional pasture, the inclusive playground that we dream about where families can come with children that 
normally can't go to the park because there's not a restricted area like you have a a lot of autistic kids will just take off running like those puppies yes. <laughs> you, you can't call them back right. so you know be fenced in we're looking at close to six million but we're going to do it in stages mm -hmm. so we're not see gonna, i was going to ask for 10 you know 10 million <laughs> it would be good you yeah. might if you're asking mm -hmm. for six you might as well yeah. ask for 10. yeah and if we hit six then wow. that'll get us where we need to be right, right. now but we, we there's so much growth. i choke when i say six and then i say god says it's not seven you know, it's not 10. It's just, it's just Sandy 10. says it's 10. Yeah. And that's cool, you know. And like Sandy shared, one of the, the other hardships is the fact that because we're all volunteers, all of my, all of my certified instructors, my certified ESs are getting educations to do this, but they still have full-time jobs. Mm -hmm. And so there's only so many hours that they can work. And so we not only can't go through October, we can't expand to during the day because we can't pay staff. We can't pay staff because they can only work six months out of the year. Do you so. have an event or fundraiser coming up to kick off your $6 million or do you already have money in the bank that you started? To, we do it? have some money in the bank that we've been, people have given individually for 18 years <laughs> and it's still sitting there collecting a little bit of interest. We are gonna be kicking off um, a comprehensive campaign mm -hmm. here. The board's working strongly on that to f be able to, you know, do some large fundraising and um, going to have some events coming up that will enhance that. And you're going to be able to to have a platform and where you can give, whether you want to give to the building fund, whether you want to give to a sustainability fund where we'll always assure that we have at least a, 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 an executive director. I'm not paid. Mm -hmm. I don't get any money for what I do at Horses with Hearts. <laughs> and um, then um, a programming fee. So if you want to put your money in to make sure there's always a veterans program or always, you know, a particular a program for uh, people in a addiction recovery, then you can, you know, kind of pull your money where, where you want it to go. So we are working hard on that and um, certainly the community has been overwhelming. Like everything we've done has been community <laughs> supported and we're just kind of taking that next step and, and knowing that the horse can change. Every, every person's life gets changed by the horse when they come. They are just amazing. To get $6 million, you need to get some pretty big size grants or gifts. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? good question it's, you can't 20 20 dollars a month doesn't get you to six million i know a few people <coughs> you coughed on that i know a few people i didn't cough on you <laughs> I, I on you. <laughs> um certainly i don't know if we could put a number to how many grants we've applied for and are applying for because we don't leave any stone unturned mm -hmm. in that regard um one of the big challenges, and I'm not sure why it's a challenge, other than, you know, everybody's busy, I get that, and it's a time thing. But I think, you know, once somebody comes to the farm and they see what happens there, mm -hmm. it's a real easy sell. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, getting people out there. So, you know, certainly any time, any day, you know, it, it's, of course, ultimate to be there when lessons are going on and you can see what's, what's happening. But we, we also have a program that's relatively new that's been – somewhat of a fundraiser but it's more been more about knowledge it is the leadership academies and we've had some local businesses who have uh, seen the value of that and also some government agencies so i'd like to encourage businesses and um, government organizations in the area if you haven't sent any employees to that leadership academy it's incredible i mean i went through the academy and you know, I'm not a horse expert by any means. I thought I knew more about them than I did when I went through the Leadership Academy, actually. But they're a very much of a soul and a spirit animal that you can connect to on a, on a deeper level than, um, you know, me as a dog lover. You know, <laughs> I do love dogs. But, yeah. but it's um, the lessons you can learn from a horse are just incredible. So it's not, not any surprise to me that God chose that venue with mm. Lindsay and with Kay to make that happen. And, you know, it wasn't a coincidence that she was 14 and a half. He knew what the program needed. We didn't. Yeah. Right. You didn't. Right. 
Um, Sandy, you mentioned that connection, and I've, I've been thinking in my mind, Kay, you, you can probably answer this better. Does the horse and a person tend to connect? So in other words, when, when, when someone comes and rides for the first time, do they tend to go right back to that same animal? Is there a connection that's made, or do they ride different horses each time? Or We try to give them the same horse mm -hmm. every time, but oftentimes the horse we may pick to, to start with isn't the right horse okay. for them. Um, and so we really match that. And then the horse may be lame that day. So, But what that does teach a lot of our kids is in life there's always change. Mm -hmm. And so just because I don't get to ride, you know, um, Kissa today and I have to ride, you know, Dolly this time, I find out I can and I can have fun and learn something on Dolly. And so uh -huh. that brings in a whole different aspect to the learning curve uh -huh. and the fact that one of our things that a lot of us suffer from is not liking change or wanting to be adaptable. And that's one of the things the horse will teach. I only have it's a minute left. If people want to help you financially on this project, how do they get in touch with you to do it? Um, the easiest way right now, because we do have the account set up, but if they will um, email us at, e I'm sorry, <laughs> info at horseswithhearts.org, we will get the information and connect with them. Info at horseswithhearts.org. Yes. Brand new website. Check it out. I think one of our biggest difficulties is people don't understand how the miracle works. And so, like Sandy said, unless they come see, you know, they're like, oh, okay, that, that's, that's fun. But. And what was, the, uh, what was the address again? Where are you guys located? 1952 Files Crossroads, Martinsburg. Got it. Thanks so much for coming in. Sandy, thank you for the nice warm cupcakes right out of the oven. Oh, yeah. Thanks we'll be enjoying them as soon yeah. as the break happens. <laughs> <laughs> good good uh, willpower on your part, Bob. Well, those are right in front of you. You're well, sniffing I, those. I right? know. I know. But the, the icing looks so good, and I, I'm not sure I want to be covered in icing on the air. <laughs> yeah, you will. <laughs> hey, it's uh, 9 o'clock. Okay. <laughs> they look great, Sandy. Yeah, this you. is Talk Radio WRNR Martinsburg and uh, TV 10. <laughs>